Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I'm OK Fixer. We're not working on beetles today. Instead we're working on this. This ubiquitous Japanese car uh, has four doors, a plush interior air conditioning, and all the uh, amenities that uh, luxury affords in a small package, cheap, easy to in uh, drive, uh, cheap to insure, uh, cheap to work on, and basically you just throw them away when they're used up. Except me. Uh, I've owned this car for quite a while, and uh, it had a little fender bender on it. As you can see, uh, I Frankensteined the uh, core support and the bumper back together. <coughs> Bought another headlight and a and a f fan and ra uh, and radiator. I think the only the fan was broken. The radiator wasn't, and just kind of beat it back into submission. Uh, beat the fender back into submission. I don't think I did anything to the hood. I think it's still got its dent in it. I didn't even paint it. <laughs> so, uh, this uh, will correspond with any uh, Japanese uh, front wheel drive vehicle, real wheel drive for all that matters. Just about any car, they've all gotten the same, whether they're Japanese, Korean, German, whatever. Subaru, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, Chevrolet. They're pretty much all the same now. They've all kind of uh, formed into that one line. And the one line is all about profit. It's all about, and, and, and the people leading the way were the Japanese. <clears throat> the Japanese really knew how to, uh, push affordability, I could say. So anyways, um, I'll stop rambling. Uh, and we're putting an engine in it. This is part two. And here's our unit. We have it completed. Um, and we've checked it all over. Now, you need to walk around this engine two or three times after you get it done. And you make sure every nut and bolt that you touched, you got tight, every piece on it's correct, that kind of stuff because you don't want to go into it again all right it's very important that when you mate the transmission to the engine up you turn the engine over to make sure the engine turns over and it's not it's not stuck you know it's not something binding or something like that you're looking for all those things all the little things the tabs that hold the wiring all your hoses, vacuum hoses, all that stuff like that. When I chained this up, I had it chained so that it would not uh, rub on anything that was going to really be terrorized by it. So there's a couple of issues I have here <coughs> that might crop up in the start. And number one is the Dizzy. The Dizzy is different than the, um, the old engine. Not by much, just by numbers. But hopefully uh, my computer will recognize it and the advance will work on this one. Uh, I think this is an older distributor, but I'm gonna go with it because it has less miles on it. So if the engine runs like crap, I know probably it's the distributor. Uh, another thing is I put another catalytic converter on this and I really didn't like how it sealed between the manifold and the catalytic converter. It's possible that it's going to be okay. I hope it doesn't leak. We have new oxygen sensors, new cat, uh, new water pump, uh, fixed the self-leaking spark plugs. Um, the engine is low mile. It doesn't leak out of the front pump like it did, or the front seal like uh, the other one did. It doesn't leak out of the back like the other one did. The head gasket doesn't have a leak like the other one did. And I have a lower mile transmission with less wine out of the planetary, hopefully. Um, all our electronics have been hooked up and all our cooling lines and wires have been hooked up. Our fill tube has been hooked up. Uh, I even made sure that 
the rusty tab on the other one was changed for the ground. Little things like this are going to matter, so you're going to need to check this all. Again, this is just, this is a Nissan, but it's going to pertain to any car. You got your motor mounts on right. I've got new seals, output shaft seals in the transmission. Um, uh, I've got a new filter on it. I filled it with oil. I made sure the drain plug was tight, but not too tight. Same with the transmission. Changed the pan, gasket in the transmission, and the filter. Um, vacuum hoses. I left a couple of vacuum hoses, and I replaced some of, some of the vacuum hoses because I haven't. I'm going to replace all the vacuum hoses, but they're broke off in such a way that I know where they go if that makes sense to you so we'll replace those one at a time and after the engine runs we'll replace the ignition uh, components distributor cap rotor plug wires and plugs um, haven't got any oil in it yet so or transmission fluid um, oh and I replaced the pulley too because that's almost impossible to get to so and I put my uh, pulley on for the uh, air conditioner because it's almost impossible to get to. I have to look at that pulley again. I didn't look at it closely, so I'll have to look at that again. Here's a little something I noticed. We hope we're, we're going to hope that that works. If it doesn't, we got another one out of the other engine. Um, I used the best radiator hoses. Uh, looks like I had a newer upper, and my lower is beautiful. I replaced my lower, and this pipe is really nice. So we're looking at all of that. Then uh, get inside your car and think about these kind of things. Uh, my line, my uh, formed line here for my uh, heater core was all bloated from oil so I did a two-fold is I put another piece of three-quarter inch heater hose on it and I connected it with one of these little Prestone T's and uh, that way when you're putting uh, antifreeze in it you can open that up and it'll allow uh, the antifreeze to completely circulate through the engine because there won't be an air bubble in it you can open that up and that way you don't have to wait for your head to get fantastically hot uh, to open up the thermostat. Uh, new fuel filter. Uh, while I was in here I tightened the A-arm bolts up that I didn't have really tight. Uh, new uh, aft oxygen sensor. Um, and I just generally spruced and cleaned everything up. Um, I uh, let's see what else did I do? Mm, I think that's about it. We had a board here. I, I left this board in place here uh, because that way you don't if if you accidentally bump into something you don't scar up your your condenser. Uh, I think that's it. Kind of taped everything up. Oh, I, uh, I kind of rewrapped. My wiring was coming apart, so I kind of rewrapped it, cleaned it all up, and I think we're ready to go back in with this engine after I check the uh, after I check the front uh, pulley. So let's get going on that. We picked a beautiful day today. It's nice and cool, and it's windy, so we got a nice breeze going. It's not very hot right now. I am working under the carport when the sun comes up and it's about one o'clock carport under here it gets pretty hot if there's not a breeze and you can feel the radiating heat so you, you want to take that in consideration too where you're going to go also where where's your car so I'm on a little hump there I need to push my car forward a little bit more and that way it'll give me a, a much nicer smoother flatter place to work on um, this gives me just enough room to lift this engine up and probably I'll lift the engine up, push the car forward just a little bit more 
so I'll be basically working on this surface right here which is pretty clean and relatively even all right let's get after it I guess I should have showed that but I didn't um, if you have a unit that uh, the starter is impossible to get to which is like right here it's not impossible but if you had a lift it would be easy but on the on your ground and you're an old guy impossible <laughs> so uh, what I did is uh, since I got it hooked up here I took my power this is your power of course and then you want to look for the big wire and there's the big wire right there and uh, I put a pick in that and the big wire what it does is energizes your solenoid and uh, and that is the power for your starter so you, you ground to your body put your positive on there put a pick or something in there and then just touch this uh, big wire right there to the to the positive and it, and it rolls the engine over and then then you know for a fact that uh, the engine rolls over and the starter works all right don't put it through your windshield you're going to want to go down a little at a time and uh, just a little bit and then clear your hoses and your lines and look around and make sure you're not rubbing on anything or going to pull anything and take your wiring harness and put it where it needs to go that sort of thing look and see what kind of clearance you're going to have hoping that this isn't going to muck up that wiring or anything you'll see sometimes you have to take off stuff I took off my pulley for fear I would bend it and then this post here when I set it down you can see the bend in the you can see the bend right there that it made in it so I have to take my air conditioning mount off so I'll do that there you go there are four engine mounts on this and um, I've got the one for the transmission and sometimes what you can do is you can stick a screwdriver through it to get yourself close and leave your bolts loose a little bit and it'll give you a little wiggle room uh, most cars have a front wheel drive have a strap underneath and they have a front and rear and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that strap off and then uh, I'm going to position my engine down on a block uh, on the oil pan and get the front one close and get that in there then I'll have the front and the back and then I can line up these much easier so there's a bit of trickery you have to do in order to get this in there again when you're lowering and closing up and down make sure your lines are are free and not binding on anything or you know you're not ripping your your boots off your uh, your rack and pinion or uh, or the the uh, lines to your rack and pinion something impossible to get to uh, so be very careful be very ginger while I was underneath here playing with this engine mount I have a bolt missing I don't know if that's too big or not but I have a bolt missing in my uh, probably too big a smaller one there. all right you can see I'm gonna lay this down I guess maybe you'll be able to see or not I don't know how about uh, how about there can you see let's move this over a little bit more so you can see a little better Try that now you can see what a piece of cake it is to get your front and rear mount bolts in if you take this down. So it's, it's quite a bit easier if you work on your side, uh, your left and your right, and you move this down a little bit, the centerpiece, and then you can manipulate it very easily in order to get your bolts in and your rear bolt as well so it's easy okay there she is supported on all fours that mount that one that one and the one in the rear uh, I need to look at this 
Oh. Okay, that's kind of free. <laughs> ah, there's two bolts that go through here and they go up. That's going to be fun to get to. Okay, but we'll do it. That won't be a big deal. All right, there you go. Supported on its own. I have it up on jack stands, so it's a little easier to work on underneath. Okay. I picked these up today. Um, since I do a lot of body work and body shop stuff, um, I went down and took these 20-year-old yellow headlights down and, um, you know, I used a couple old discs, uh, 1200 I think, and just kind of went over them with some water and some 1200, cleared them, cleaned them all up, did all the grunt work, and then um, set them inside the booth. And um, when he paints cars and he paints two or three a day, uh, you know, there's he has leftover clear all the time. So he just turns around and goes, tss, 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 tss. there, you're done. Put them in another room, let them cure, and beautiful headlights. Yeah, those look much better in there than those old fogged up ones. Like I said, all I did is sand them with about 1200. They're still crazed a little bit, but what do you want for 20 year old lights? The whole thing is it cost zero, nothing. And uh, knew the guy at the paint place, and uh, and uh, he just shot a little clear on it. Bob's your uncle. We're done. Uh, we're coming along. Um, I just set the radiator in. We'll have to hook up all the systems to that. Uh, electrical over here with the battery box. I think I have one vacuum hose. I don't know where it goes to. So we'll have to figure that out. It ought to be pretty easy. Just have a look and see and we'll probably find it. Also this hose for the I don't know this hose for the transmission it's got to go up here and tuck behind that kind of as a it's a breather hose can't just hang down it never did so okay well coming along little bit by little bit okay this is a 21 year old car uh, and I want you to see how much rust is in it. Okay this is why I'm putting another engine in this car is because in Oklahoma cars don't rust. They do not rust. Even the cheap Japanese cars, they do not rust. They just don't. There's no salt on the roads. So yeah, so that's another one of my secrets, is Oklahoma. No salt on the road, red state where everything is open. Please don't move here if you're from a blue state. The reason why everything's shut down in your blue state is because your dumb ass voted that way. Don't move to Oklahoma and vote that way, okay? It'll screw everything up here. Just stay there and be miserable. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of oxygen sensors, uh, let me show you a little something. That is a trick little tool. When I took out my oxygen sensor, it took out some of the threads with it. So I went down immediately and I bought one of these. It's a little thread chaser for your oxygen sensor. The upper one wasn't bad, but the bottom one catches every all, all the water and stuff. Pretty handy little tool. O'Reilly's, $8. In the Lyle aisle. Hey, I made a rhyme. <laughs> okay, give her a final uh, inspect and detect and neglect. Uh, we just have our CV joints in there uh, so I could put transmission fluid in it. Uh, topped off the power steering. Uh, topped off my radiator several times and opened that vent over there on the, uh, on the whatever it's called heater hose um, yeah so I think we're good engine oils up to snuff and, all right corn tacked
Well. Shut her off. Check all our fluids and stuff first. Got a little noise coming over here. Wonder what it could be. Hmm. Maybe it's normal. Normal. Maybe a vacuum leak. I don't know. I'll have to check. Let me see. Hold on. Pause. Can you see her? Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be a uh, vacuum leak. <laughs> Let me get a new hose on there. It goes from yo to yo. We won't be making that noise no more. Okay, we topped up all our liquids. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. There you go. That's a windshield waiting to get broken. Topped off all our liquids. And uh, I rerouted my accelerator cable one on the top, and I was missing a bolt there, so corn tacked. Oh, battery light. Let's see if we can make it or not. Oh, 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 oh. smooth. Smooth like a silk. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Very nice. Nice indeed. Very quiet. Nice. Okay. Well, let's uh, stick her all together and we'll do a test drive with Toby. Watch them fluids though. Transmission, power steering. Coolant, oil. Those are the four I de dealt with. Make sure it doesn't have any upsidasiums or upsidonsiums also. That's a vacuum leak. So uh, check out all your stuff before you take off. And check underneath too. I didn't look underneath. Is everything just spraying out under there? Might do a final look at our belt and make sure it's Make sure they're tight. All right. Let's take her for a drive. It's running right now. We have a little smoke, but that is because of my manhandling of the exhaust manifold and uh, greasy fingers and uh, grease on the um, new catalytic converter, that kind of thing. We're gonna watch our temperature watch for leaks very quiet nice. okay um, I'm gonna button this up while I'm while I'm uh, letting it run. Now I'll probably end up shutting it off because I got to put that guard on down there. So we'll go for a ride here in a minute. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting a million things, you know, before I go for a ride. It runs on this uh, tune up that's on it. Yeah, I got close to those wires and got zapped. <laughs> I touched one, you know, you shouldn't get zapped just touching it. So they leak really bad. They're the original ones, probably from the 90s. So uh, we're going to replace those, uh, use some silicone on them, uh, new uh, iridium plugs, and uh, a new rotor. So let's do that. No, I know. We'll get to the test drive in a minute. Well, um, this is a, a little questionable. It's kind of roily, and it's not quite the color I would want it to be. Um, I don't know. Oh, this is transmission fluid, and I had too much in the transmission, so I had to let out a quart. And when I let out a quart, this came out of it. So probably I'm going to want to drive it for a week or two or three or a month or something, and then uh, do a flush on it. So it only took, uh, well, seven quarts. 
and the whole system holds 12. So there is, you know, five quarts of yeah in it. Okay. Put the hood on it and we'll go. All right, we're gonna do a little test drive now. We got the hood on. Smooth. There you go. Let's see how the sh transmission shifts. Ooh, no more lurching transmission. That was sweet. Nice. It did shift uh, hard from first to second. Shifted pretty simple. Ah, since I did my uh, my uh, ball joints, my steering wheel straight now. I'm still going to go get a, an alignment, but it's straight now reasonably straight. Air conditioning works. No dash lights. No lights. Uh, we had uh, some vacuum hoses un undone and that was given a code and then we had some uh, the because the vacuum hoses were undone it was causing a rich mixture which polluted the uh, catalytic converter on the front. The front catalytic converter polluted it. And so um, uh, I changed the cat and uh, both oxygen sensors and then um, fixed all the vacuum hoses, all the vacuum leaks, and now it's lean like it should be. Good, nice, nice launch. And lots of power. Don't want to speed down here. Temperature's great. Okay, well, uh, you know, here's the deal. Uh, rabbit. Aww. <laughs> I wouldn't go hit him. Here's the deal. Go buy yourself a car. See, see what you get for, you know, ten thousand dollars a used car. Probably have to get fifteen to get a decent one. Maybe $10,000 for a decent used car. It doesn't need a lot. Maybe some low miles, you know, 70000 or something like that. Well, I've got... I, I know it's less than $1,700. Probably more in the neighborhood of fifteen. dollars uh, For everything I've done, yeah, probably seventeen. Because I bought... The, the, the cat was 100 bucks, and the oxygen sensors were $100. So I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, probably I'm at seventeen. dollars um, so, you know, think about that. Uh, I've got that much money into this car uh, that we own. Uh, I'll be able to drive it for another 100,000 miles doing just basic maintenance on it, you know. Uh, transmission shifts a whole lot better. The whine in the planetary is gone. I don't hear the whine anymore. I don't hear that wee 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 wee. That's great. <laughs> oh, it's trick again. That's great. Wonderful. So, you know, weigh that. It, uh, yeah, it took me a week to do this, you know, in my spare time. And uh, it's hot and terrible and greasy and that kind of thing. But, you know, it's not, you're not getting a mortgage on another car. You know, just the mortgage on another car you have to pay probably what the mortgage is on the car in insurance. So, you know, unless you're famously wealthy, you know, you can afford things like this. Anyways, you can do it. You can do it. There's a lot of tutorials on YouTube, uh, and this is one of them. It's these all these cars, these Japanese cars are all ubiquitous. There doesn't matter Subaru, Honda, Toyota, even the American cars are like this. The same thing. So you can follow this kind of uh, as a as a little uh, template on how to do it, and uh, and there you go. We're running and driving again, and uh, and it's it just behaving marvelously. So uh, thank you for watching this and uh, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See you later.